YouTube, it's me, Midway Joe Ball here, and today we are doing a bit of a different video. Today we are doing a screen recording on my MacBook, and today we're going to be talking about legalization of gel blasters in Australia and interstate. So let's just have a look at it. So we'll just see. So over here we have um, my Discord. I mainly just use Discord for gel blasting. So First go over here, first gel ball, nothing really interesting there. Then you go to Geosoft AU, that's basically gel ball Australia. And if you go to news and leaks, it should be at the top news and information location. And it's basically right here. So, it's basically the proposition of the latest QPS weapons and last seen meeting to be found here. So, the purpose of legalisation is actually fine. Locked in containers will be required for storage, no licensing required, removal of toy expansion expansion is being replaced for not a firearm to ensure that this use does not crop up again. So basically so give us a link to this page, which is right here. What is right there? that doesn't that's pretty much relevant. Um yeah, what is what's the need for changes? Gel blasters instance 293 in 2019. Most of these were none of, pretty much none of these. No, what are you saying? Pretty much all of these were just um people got in trouble, there were no fire space, but there were a few there where actual they got in actual trouble like fines and all that. So drain of police resources don't always result in charges and often amount to no action taken. However, every incident requires an armed tactical response unit such as time as police can say safely identify that item is not a firearm and there is no danger to the community. If you can hear something in the background that is an ice cream truck, of course it decides to come around once a year and of course it's when I'm doing a YouTube video. Thanks a lot. Impact of frontline police responses to make important incidents, so like basically what we're saying there is like wasting police time. So is there a possibility of police shooting yet? Because police are going to treat it as a real firearm if they do see it. Because if it looks like a firearm, they're going to shoot at you. If you point at them, they're going to shoot at you. Why don't you? So if you ever encounter a police officer and you're holding a jail blaster, which I hope you never do, um, just always follow their commandments and um, always tell them if you're reaching for something, what you're reaching for. Um, 2017 state court. Okay. Ask commissioner to consider restrictions ownership on replica firearms. That's talking about replica firearms because replica firearms can look a lot like gel blasters. And to be fair, replica firearms look a lot more realistic than gel blasters because most replica firearms are metal. I do have one myself, but it's really not realistic. But it is metal. Believe it or not, I took, I got that from Turkey and somehow got over and brought it into Australia. So, he's just talking about replica firearms. Here, what, what about toys? There are no expansion for a toy in definitely. So it can be a toy or paper, paper or a bottle open below. Okay, so it's just all. Main restriction items are not firearms, so it's the same. Um, replica rep guns and gel blasters are not firearms. Shooting items are not a category weapon, so saying it's not a weapon. That's what it said on the first dot point. You will not need a license to have one, so it's basically also saying that it's not a gun. Replicas, including revolt gel blasters, will not need to be registered with the weapons licensing, so basically saying. You don't have to register it if you get a gel blaster, you can just buy one and that's your day. If you if you're responsible for ex excuse to have a can't read that because I'm dumb, isn't it? Um this will not affect importance to Queensland B seven oh nine A. Police certification only states that our license are permanent is not required to position in the state. This will not change. Weapons are seen are working hard on creating smart from the eliminates. Common applications errors are streamlined import 
expresses one point. Yeah, yeah. What are we using? So I'll just stop on everyone because I don't want to read everyone. If you want to read them in the sports video, I have a link to this in the description if you want to read it yourself. If you don't understand me, me reading, because like, come on. So I'll just. Okay, that's it. Okay. Watch a YouTube video from ABC News about the legalization of job losses. I will be commentating over this job. No, not job loss, but over this um, broadcast. Um, see if they go anything wrong. They did. Gel ball blasters are banned in some states and territories with concerns the replica weapons look dangerously like the real thing. That is true. They do look a lot like the real thing, especially if they're metal, because you'll have like. Kind of like, what you call it, like, you see a metal gun, you would, oh, you'll see like, corrosion, not corrosion, but like, the being hit against the wall and still, you'll see it under the paint. Go. It's the Battle of Brisbane and teams from the Gold Coast are attempting a takeover. It's a really good sport. I like that I can actually do some exercise and not actually hate what I'm doing. Yeah, that's one thing about gel blasting. It's a great sport it's good exercising and yeah just people love doing it it's like it's fun for the family like I mean, i've seen kids younger than five being playing the game before it's like you just see whoever's there who it plays it's quite good um here in perth we have about 30 people attending attending each game then we'll have cqb during the week then we'll have a milsim about once every three months Gel Ball's popularity has soared in recent months, with thousands of people joining an ever-expanding number of closed Facebook groups. It gets you active and outside, oh, and it's just really fun. For many, part of the thrill is the cosplay element, and that means realistic-looking battle gear and guns. Daniel Hennessy sells gel blasters from his shop in Brisbane. Basically how they work is they use compressed ambient air to uh, push a soft project. Ambient air just basically being normal air. Um, it's basically saying the O-ring it takes in, pushes it out, um, by the stream which would normally be 1.3 or 1.2. So they're biodegradable, they basically explode on impact. Do they hurt? Um, they can have a little bit of a... They're basically just orbies. Um, so that's why... And if you're wondering why airsoft is illegal, it's because airsoft will have uh, more damage on whatever you would be shooting at, and yeah, it's a bit of like thing like you want to say why aren't airsoft guns legal, but wait, what? Why airsoft guns are legal, but job blasters aren't? You want to say that, but then you don't want them to make job blasters legal because you said that. They might be getting the wrong message, but. Basically, if you're watching this and you play Airsoft, not Gel Ball, Gel Ball is basically a game where you, instead of, like, Gel Blast is basically just Airsoft guns, so just shoot Orbeez, like, you could put, you could put Airsoft pellets in a Gel Blaster gun, and they'll just probably shoot just as well. Um, if you're watching this and you do Airsoft, you, I reckon Gel Blast is, but it's more cheaper than most, definitely, but it's biodegradable easily. Tiny sting. It's the appearance of some blasters that's drawn the attention of authorities, none of whom would talk to the ABC on camera. But Australian Border Force has seized several shipments. Last year, Australia's largest importer fought back in court, and a queen... Not any more tech toys. This is um, the largest importer now. I just want to add that in because that would be a weird thing. Up, but that's true. Queensland magistrate declared the blasters toys. The actual projectile, the, the product... Uh, fires um, is, is not considered ammunition under the law. Now they're classified as imitation weapons and a permit is required to import them. You know, I just think it's problematic having weapons like this or, you know, these kind of replica looking weapons out in the public. If you get caught out in public with something that looks threatening like this, then, you know, there's laws in place that... Um... Yeah, basically what he's saying is if the police see you holding one of these, you're going to treat it as a real gun until they can figure out there's no threat and it's a toy gun but they'll most likely um confiscate the job I'll stop you for further examination and you'll probably you won't get a fine but if you do something 
the shoe sort of but you definitely get a fine without the permission. So like, you know. That catch you there for that. Laws vary between states and territories. The blasters are legal in Queensland and South Australia, but elsewhere they're either banned or fall into a grey area. Grey area is basically, um, there's been no court case saying they're legal or illegal, so basically they're still classified as a toy. There's, you don't need a licence, you don't need anything, you don't need, um, what's we call it, like a locker kind of thing. So, basically... Um, if you can't see, there's, um, Perth, Northern Territory, Tasmania and Canberra. Obviously, to Canberra because they did kind of do that. Criminologist Terry Goldsworthy says there'd be less concern if they looked more like a toy. Thing so it kind of like... thing is, like, um, the vector, it looks more like a toy. Mainly because it has that orange thing in the middle of it, which is orange, which is saying that it's a toy. But... If you had a real gun, you could just put a bit of orange shape on the end tip and just walk into a shopping centre. And, like, it won't really change the thing. Large, such as weapons the armed forces use. So I really think there's a lack of distinction between uh, these type of replica weapons and the real thing. New South Wales businessman Brad Towner is at the centre of a test case. He'd been selling blasters for seven years before he was charged with serious firearm offences. He says it's killed his business. So far it's been a 19-month uh, standstill process, which not a lot of progress has happened. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's basically ruined my life. The game in New South Wales has gone underground, with events held in secret locations. <laughs> and players travelling north across the border. Enthusiasm for the game is high in Queensland. When organisers started this event a year ago, 24 people took part. Today, there's 150. And business is booming. As of um, probably mid-January, we've um, we'll probably have about 15,000 pieces coming in a month. We will have no hassle selling that whatsoever. The best thing about it is we've all made yeah. a group of new friends. We're all yeah. part of a team. Brad Towner is packing up his life in Sydney. He plans to join the Queensland contingent by Christmas. Daya Clark, ABC News. Enter. So, it's pretty much it of the YouTube video, I'd say. Um, not much more. I'm probably doing more videos like this, like, seeing, watching videos of people doing, like, including gel blasters, seeing, seeing if I'm catching any mistakes, do anything. I'll just do, be doing more videos like this, um, so, see if I'll make, um, I might be making a part two of this legalisation video if anything else comes up, um, I might make a part two going into more detail on some stuff, but, um, until then I'll see you next time, um, the next few days I should be posting another video, so hope, hopefully you'll be there for that, um, please hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps spread the word of the channel. Um, see you guys next time. Have a good day.